even though we don't look into the past, but you um, leverage past wins for your future. Um, Meaning that this, like, well, I already played the piano before. I already did a talk before. I did. I was in situations where I had to like learn something quick and do it. So because of your previous experience of winning, so when you have a something comes ahead, you're like, yeah. oh, I did this before. So I've been here before. You know, we were just like Justice or any of our kids, but we forgot. You don't realize, even though we think, oh, I have cleared my negative belief system. It's like until your son pulls something off like this, you're like, wow, I still got a lot of yeah, and beliefs. and even and even still, like I get nervous and I freak out if I have two days notice. But then, if it's something that I'm good at, if it's well, if it's something that you're bad at, well, you obviously need a lot of practice. You don't, you really don't um, need to be worried because it's something that you've already done in life. Thanks so much for coming on. I really, really enjoy your content that you've been putting out on Instagram. I've been following you and you know, checked out your vlog on YouTube. And I, I, I found you just through social media. So if you could kind of explain what your outlook is and what you're trying to do for everyone who may not be familiar with you, I think it'd be a good way to start. Um, you know, if you, looked at, if you looked at my life six months ago, you would have thought I really had it all. You know, I have the number one practice in my profession's history. I have the 100% financial freedom security. I got the beautiful wife, the two healthy, amazing kids, and all the time to do whatever it is we want to do. But yet, you know, I'm depressed and I'm burnt out. And I'm wondering, am I going through a midlife crisis? Did I lose my purpose? So I questioned my purpose. I'm like, why am I doing this? Because through life, I had taken on this secret identity, this less than watered down version of my truth or my hero. I just realized I wasn't the life I was really created to have because see, I found my identity in what I did as my job and what I did. I didn't find my identity in who I was and who I was created and destined to be. And my identity is no longer that of just being limited to just the doctor. You know, I realize I am the hero. For those that are sleepwalking through life and live in this secret identity, you know, I exist to wake them up. And that's why we started the I Am Hero Project. And so the vlogs are just documenting the journey of getting this message out to the world. So you actually see the ups, the downs, the unknowns, and the whole blueprint so it could give other people permission to do the same. A lot of people face that same thing, that, that depression of not feeling fulfilled being trapped in an identity of you are what you do for a living and that's it and so it, that's what I, I i think this podcast is perfect because it's two people in two very different realms and trying to accomplish the same goal of waking people up and going hey you can be you yeah ryan you nailed it on the head and it's because we've been conditioned by injected induced values from society and this is a society that promotes they educate they reward and they'll even medicate you into mediocrity you know we're educated by we're, we're told what to think we're told what to do but we never learn how to think and how to become self-aware in our true gifts and talents people who are becoming doctors at the moment and you can tell every accomplishment they get they feel a little bit more fulfilled and that might be their main purpose in life but Obviously, you kind of turned around at some point and felt that that had been a path that maybe now, looking back, you wouldn't have taken or changed something. So when you were in college and things like that, was, was pursuing that degree what was fulfilling or was it just because that's what you were told you should do? So I went to see this doctor and he took pictures of my spine and my lower spine was a wreck, even though I didn't feel it. And they were the, they were the nerve roots going to my uh, lower intestines and my colon area. And I chose to start correcting it that way to find the cause of it. And then in seven months, my body beats a terminal, irreversible autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis. And, and the genius inside the body healed itself. And so when something impacts your life like that, that's when I say, well, then this is my purpose. So I went back to school for that. And my, you know, to become a doctor there, my wife went to work at doctor's offices to learn the business, which they never teach you in school. So I was always street smart when it came to that. I knew that I went to school, Ryan, to get the piece of paper. See, the piece of paper allowed me to practice, but school never taught me. There's not one thing I learned in school 
that I used to have the largest clinic in the world. Because what I did is my wife and I went to Apprentice. You know, I just passed, I just got, I just had to get through the test because the paper allowed me to do what I had to do. But I learned from apprenticing and from thought leading, you know, thought leaderships, mentors, coaches in that aspect. And we just absorbed what was useful. We made what, you know, we made it uniquely our own. And then we went and we, we just ran our own race. Because, and what's crazy is today, so many doctors, they come out with a piece of paper and they come out entitled that the world owes them everything. But the thing is you come out and you don't have a job. And the thing is, if you don't, if, if you didn't have the street smarts like I had to say, listen, I'm not going to wait till that day. I'm going to learn from the top doctors in the world on how they build it. And it was all systems and business principles. That's the thing that allowed me to become successful. Nothing I learned in school. It used to be like school kind of, and they still do because it's outdated. They teach you little snippets and they edit it their way. And then that's what you're supposed to know. You take the test on it and we move on. But now there's so many online resources. If one of your children went, I really want to learn about space, he could sit on the computer for eight hours and learn nothing but space because that's what he wants to learn. So why would you force it down his throat unless he wants to consume it at that high speed? Right, like, so, yeah, absolutely. Like I call it YouTube University. I mean, they, they love watching stuff they love. I mean, they could, you're right, they do it for hours. You know, that, that stuff has moved and now the new generations are moving forward and I think it's a good thing. I think it's really good that people are spending time developing themselves to raise their kids better down the road instead of being 21 years old and having a child and then you know, not even knowing themselves and trying to develop another person. hundred percent. Like, you know how many people like they graduated the college, they got their degree. Then, you know, they had kids 18 or maybe more if they had a couple kids, you know, they were, they were doing one extra thing, but not really living their, their purpose. Like, you know, so then they, they graduate, they leave the house. And now at 50 or 60, that mom or that dad's like, okay, who are we? You know, the kids are gone, now they're back and, they, and it's a very depressing time. That's why they, they show you depression is the highest in that 40 to 60 uh, age range. I'm talking to you at 40 years old. It's like, how cool would it be like, it, you know, I, when I did graduate high school to be like, okay, I get to experience and travel and do these experiences and really kind of find out what I truly like in life and then get to decide, well, hey, listen, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, so I have to take this route. I really think college happens at the absolute worst time because what happens in that in that 20-year-old area, they're telling you what you need to do. But we're not having a chance to say, hey, listen, I, I don't know if I like this. The, the grades become like a direct re reflection of your self-value and self-esteem. It's disgusting. It's like kids won't even play. You know, I remember like when the kid had bad grades, he was the bad kid and you didn't, you weren't allowed to hang out with them. Right? So we're talking, it's a grade. It's not a, it's actually, uh, it's not a description of who he, who he is as a human being. And then if, if that doesn't get the kid to transform, to, to conform, then now in today's society, they'll diagnose you because you can't sit in school for eight hours because you're creative and you would do something else, then they'll diagnose you and they'll start medicating you. And they just drug you to freaking conform. Awesome. Appreciate Once you, again, man. thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been a blessing. I thank you so much for your time. Have a good day, man. God bless, bye-bye. That was good, man. I didn't know how long that guy was gonna go. <laughs> that was good, that was good. That was a good conversation. No, it's good. Like, don't you? I mean, that's what I enjoy. I just, it's, it's a good conversation reaching out to people that have the same, you know, it's not even, you know, similar minds doesn't mean exact minds. And that's what's kind of cool, you know?